name is Bob Hartman, and I'm here to tell you a bedtime story. This is my friend and assistant, Mr. Jumble, who will be helping me along the way. Say hello to everybody, Mr. Jumble. Mr. Jumble says hello. Very friendly he is. Now, Mr. Jumble, today we're going to be doing a, a story from a, one of my new books um, called the Link It Up Bible. Yeah? And would you like to know what makes this Bible different from other Bibles? No, you wouldn't. All right, well, I'm going to tell you anyway, all right? <laughs> what makes this Bible different from other Bibles <laughs> is that it links up the stories through the Bible, yeah, from the Old Testament to the New Testament to show how it's one great big story, the story of God's relationship with us, God's relationship with the world. But that's why it's called the Link It Up Bible. That's more interesting, isn't it? Okay, right. <laughs> well, the story we're going to do today is a, um, is a story that actually is one of those linking stories. It's a story that doesn't get in many children's Bibles because it's about a dream that uh, King Nebuchadnezzar had uh, when Daniel and his friends were captive in Babylon. Yeah. And in order to do it, we're going to need you to do some help, to do some actions. And, and Mr. Jumble has kindly provided some things for, for us to use. So here's what we're going to do. There's going to be a statue later in the story, okay? And the statue's um, head will be made of gold. So if you've got a two-pound coin or a one-pound coin, you can just pull that out and point to the goldy bit. And we're going to go shiny, okay? There we go. Now the next bit of the statue, all right, is made of silver, okay? So... Pick a 50p coin, a 5p coin, whatever you got. And we're going to go less shiny. All right. So you got it. Shiny. Less shiny. All right. And then finally, the next bit of the statue is made of bronze. So if you've got a penny, all right, you can hold that up in the air. And you can go less shiny still. All right. So it's shiny, less shiny, less shiny still. Now, the next part of the statue is made of iron. And, um... Mr. Jumble, uh, you were supposed to bring something made of iron, and all I see here is something made of gold, something made of silver, and something made of bronze. What's that? Oh, it's on the floor. Oh, good. Okay, a nail or something. Something made of, um, iron. Yeah. Okay. Very funny, Mr. Jumble. All right, so, <laughs> if you've got something else made of iron, that's fine, but if this is all you have, and it's not recently been used and very hot, um, then by all means, use that. Finally, um, we need something made of clay and iron. And uh, I see here on the floor again, uh, Mr. Jumble has kindly provided some Play-Doh. Excellent. All right. Now, the thing is, you probably don't have all of this stuff to hand at the moment. But my assumption is that you can pause this thing. And if you can't, I'll apologize for that right now. But if you can pause it, then by all means, run around your house and go find something that's gold, something that's silver, something that's bronze. Coins will do an iron, and some Play-Doh. All right, and we'll do the story when you get back. If you aren't able to pause, let me just uh, show you some of the pictures from inside the um, Link It Up Bible. As you can see, they're black and white, but the cool thing is, um, frankly, you could probably just color them in if you wanted to. Um, it's a lovely style, and it brings some of the words to life as well. All right, well, I'm assuming you have everything you need, and um, Mr. Jumble, are you ready? Yes, okay, fine, okay. Well, here's the story. Get your stuff ready. Here we go. Nebuchadnezzar's dream. King Nebuchadnezzar couldn't sleep. He kept dreaming a dream that kept him up at night. So he said for his magicians and wise men and sorcerers. No, no monkeys. Tell me what my dream means, he ordered them. Quite naturally, they asked. Please, O king, tell us what you dreamed. Oh, no, he replied. I'm not playing that game. If I told you my dream, you can make up any old meaning to explain it. Tell me what I dreamed first to show me you really know what you're doing. Then tell me what it means. And by the way, he added, if you cannot do this, I will destroy every one of your houses and tear you to pieces, limb from limb. <laughs> But your majesty, they cried, that is an impossible job. It's a job for the gods. There's not a person on earth who could do this. So King Nebuchadnezzar, true to his word, sent out an order that every magician and wise man and sorcerer in the land should be torn to pieces. 
Lim from Lim, Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were wise men too. So when the captain of the guard came to kill them, Daniel asked to see the king. Give me some time, he said to the king. I will tell you both your dream and its meaning. The king agreed. And Daniel went to his friends and asked them to pray for him. Then, in the night, God showed Daniel the dream and its meaning. So Daniel went to see the king again. Please don't kill the wise men, he begged. I have the answer. Or rather, my God has shown me the answer. Tell me then, the king replied, what was my dream? You saw a statue, Daniel said, big and bright and frightening. Its head was made of gold. Shiny, very nice. Its arms and chests were silver. Not so shiny. Its belly and thighs were bronze. Less shiny still. Its legs were made of iron. Yeah, iron. <laughs> and its feet were a mixture of iron, yes, and clay. And then, Your Majesty, you saw a great stone not carved by human hands. That stone crashed into the statue and crushed it to pieces so small they were carried away by the wind. Then finally the stone grew into a great mountain that covered the whole earth. The look on the king's face was all Daniel needed to know that what he'd said was true. So he went on to reveal the dream's meaning. Your kingdom, he said, is the head of gold. Shiny. <laughs> A less powerful kingdom will follow yours. That is the arms and chest of silver. Mm, not so shiny. <laughs> the belly and thighs of the bronze are the kingdom that will follow that one. Less shiny still. And after that will come the kingdom of iron, yes? That will crush all before it. Finally, there will come a kingdom that is partly strong and partly weak. That is the feet of iron and of clay. And in the days of that kingdom, God himself will set up a kingdom that will crush every other kingdom and fill the earth. That is the stone that grows into a mountain. When King Nebuchadnezzar heard Daniel's interpretation, he fell on his face before him. Surely your God is a great God, he cried. A God who reveals mysteries. With that, he honored Daniel with gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were given promotions too. The four men who had come to Babylon as captives were put in charge of those who had captured them, simply because they were faithful to their God and trusted in his power. Now well, that's the story, Mr. Jumble. And uh, I just wondered, uh, do you have any idea what that uh, kingdom that God wanted to set up was, the one that came in the time of the, 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 the feet of iron and of clay. Any idea? No, you're not a theologian. Okay. Or a biblical scholar. Fair enough, but, but actually you don't have to be. Because theologians and biblical scholars have talked about this for ages, and apparently that kingdom that Daniel prophesied was actually the kingdom of God that Jesus came to announce and to establish and to set up his death and his burial and his resurrection. It's all about him. That's what the story's all about. And it links that story from the Old Testament to a story from the New. Well, that in mind, I thought it might be nice to finish with a song. What do you think? No, you don't like to sing. Okay, really, what is it that you do like to do, Mr. Jumble? Eat bananas. Okay, well, fine. We don't have any bananas here with us. But we do have a, a song uh, that comes from, um, actually, a rhyming Bible. Yep, that I wrote last year. And from a CD, because my friend Sam Hargreaves uh, wrote a bunch of tunes to um, some of the rhymes in the book. And I thought it would be nice to do a quite gentle, lovely one to kind of finish up with. What? What was it? What's that? Oh, you... 
You like music too? That's good, that's good. Uh, and what kind of music do you like? The monkeys. Okay, well, yeah, fair enough, yeah. And the Arctic monkeys. Okay, yeah, uh-huh. And gorillas. Okay, I can see a theme developing here. And the Velvet Underground. I'm sorry, uh, I get the other three, the Velvet Underground. What's that about? Ah, there's a banana on the cover of one of their albums. Fair enough. Okay, should have guessed. All right, well, this isn't any of those bands. And um, there's a chorus to the song, okay? And uh, it's about um, uh, Moses in the bulrushes. And the chorus goes like this. It goes, hush a bye, baby, in your reed boat. Down by the bank, you bob and you float. Sleep and be safe and know as you do, your God and your sister watch over you. Now, we're going to do these actions, okay? I've kind of already done them, but, but for hush a baby, we're just going to pretend we're rocking a baby, okay? Everybody do that? I know you don't like actions. I get that, okay? Uh, so it's hush a baby in your reed boat, down by the bank. Yeah, you just point down that. You bob, and you just want to point at me because I'm bob, okay? And you float, yeah? Sleep and be safe and know as you do. Nice. Your God and your sister. And obviously, if you have a sister and your sister is in the room, then you could just point to her or you could point to any other lady in the room. And if there isn't any other lady in the room, just kind of, I don't know, don't point to anybody. All right. Watch over you. Okay. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's, uh, let's see what happens here. Let's see if this works, actually, because I've got to actually turn this thing on and get very close to the camera in order to do it. Here we go. Sleep and be safe and know as you do Your God and your sister watch over you Pharaoh had made God's people his slaves Still they grew strong and still they grew brave Fearful they'd rise, rebel and destroy He ordered the death of each baby
job, everybody. Oh, and Mr. Jumble, can I say that was an amazing performance on your part? What's that? No, no, we didn't rehearse it. That's fair enough. No, you didn't expect to play a part. I get that. Maybe I should ask you the next time. Fair enough. But you still did a great job, and I'd ask you for a high five, but I get it. That's not possible. Okay, so we're going to finish with a prayer. Mr. Jumble, of course, has decided not to shut his eyes because he can't. And um, you can shut your eyes or not. So here we go. Are you ready? Dear God, thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching out over your people when they were captives in Babylon. And for watching out over Moses because you had amazing things planned for him. As we go to sleep right now, we ask that you watch over us too. In Jesus' name, amen. Right. Okay. Good night, everybody. <laughs>
So I turn to you in the things I do. I turn to you. I turn to you in the things I say. I turn to you. I turn to you every single day that I follow your way.